Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is a little bit different of a demo video because this saber is not going to anyone in particular right now. Um, this is a saber that I'm selling. So I figured I would do the demo for this now. And then um, if anyone wants it, I can pass it to them. And if no one buys it, good, because I want to keep this thing anyway. <laughs> so this is a Corbant TFU2 hilt. Um, it's heavily weathered by me. Uh, I did all the weathering on this guy. So, uh, you know, heavily inspired by the video that Benji Graham over at Nerf Herder Customs did. I watched his video a couple times. Um, I actually applied most of those techniques to this guy. I think the only thing I did differently is I used a different color acrylic than he did. I went with a more coppery rust look. He uses a burnt sienna. Uh, his turned out fantastic. I, I like how mine turned out. Um, that's what we got here. Um, I put the leather wrap, this leather wrap, it's real leather from Defcon Bird. I didn't use any of the pieces that come with this kit from Corbanth. Um, I just prefer the real leather feel. And then I, I went the entire distance from, from here all the way to here, obviously, right? So nice and firm. It feels good in the hand. Um, I do have a red jewel right here. So if I took out this red jewel um, on my chass chassis that I printed out, so... The inspiration from this chassis came from Aaron White. He was the first one to be able to put a 28 millimeter speaker in this guy. Um, the first couple of hilts of this, of like this that I did, I put a 24 millimeter speaker in because I was thinking what could fit through the handle. And I'll show you what Aaron's idea was here in a second. Um, the only thing I added differently to his chassis, um, his chassis design, is that when I modeled my own, I put a space in here for a single NeoPixel. You can almost see it in there, right? Um, and that helps light up this red jewel um, because it is hollow. So when the it's it's wired in line with the CC Sabers LED pixels in here. So when this guy fires up, uh, this jewel fires up too. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, two button setup. So activation up top here. Auxiliary down here, works out great. Uh, this is installed with a Profi V2. It's running the latest firmware and um, it's got gesture controls also. So when we take this handle off and it does have a lot of threads, but that's okay, keeps the handle on. Not a whole lot of room in this guy to do stuff. So where I would normally like to hide my wires um, you know, the, the board is sitting right on top of the battery and the battery cradle actually doesn't even have a top to it because I needed all that space to cram everything in here. So it, it is wired from the bottom. Everything on this board is wired from the bottom. No wires coming up top, but you can just see where I came out here and then my power and my speaker wires going back this way. Um, no speaker here, right? So they've got a wireless speaker connector that's right here and it, um, uh, lines up with this 28 millimeter speaker that I've got right here in the pommel cap on this guy right here. So this 28 millimeter speaker, it's in his own case and it's a very tightly press fit into this pommel cap right here. So it's not coming out. Um, it's designed, I, I designed it like that on purpose on this part um, to stay in. Um, if you wanted to get that out, you'd have to break the speaker. But the only reason you want to get that out is if the speaker was broken and you need to replace it anyway. So it sounds really good. Uh, it stays in place just the way I want it to. So we're going to put that back on the handle. We're going to take our battery. Spring side is going to be the negative. So we'll throw a, throw a battery in here. Of course, we're not going to hear anything, right? Because we don't have a speaker. So we're going to throw this handle on. Back to the threads, no biggie. Now, once I get this handle all the way screwed in, now that speaker is fully engaged onto those pins, right? You got that, those pixels are lighting up, got your ruby lighting up here, super loud. throw a blade in it so it does have a blade retention screw the blade retention screw is going to be right here this is pretty much an all-in-one chassis so the chassis is holding the the uh cc sabers 
pixels. Um, if it wasn't for the switch assembly, you'd be able to pull this guy out, but I have to put the chassis in first, slide the chassis in first, and then I have a hole in the chassis right underneath the switches to then put the switches on and run the, my switch wires out. So it's not like you can take this out, but you don't need to. Um, everything's accessible when you take the handle off. So now that we've, we've got the blade on, Excuse me, switch sound fonts. Why do you come to my tools? Okay, this one's a prodigal butcher. I like the way it sounds, right? Kind of throaty. You're not going to see the melt because I do have this program for a full-length Neo blade, and this is just my test blade. But you can hear, all right? And then we twist off. So we've got those gesture controls, right? We've got a swing on, and we got a twist off. Or if we just wanted to use the buttons, we could do that too. So you tap the activation. Or hold the activation to turn it off. Just like that. So that's pretty much this saber. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it was a work of love for me. I've been working on this guy slowly for the past couple weeks. Um, I tend to work on multiple savers at the same time. I do get commissions done first, and then my projects take a back seat. So where I could get, you know, I might get a saber done in a day or something if it's something that belongs to me or or it doesn't belong to someone else and it's just a personal project of mine. Um, these things take weeks, a little bit at a time. If I have the time, when I have the time, um, little by little till it's done. But. This is a TFU2. Thanks.